Today, we're checking out Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash, number three from Wildstorm Comics and Dynamite Entertainment, so stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to Comic Again TV, where all geek culture collides. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. I'm Shannon, and today we're picking up where we left off with Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash number three from Wildstorm Comics and Dynamite Entertainment. This issue picks up immediately where issue number two left off. If you missed our dramatic reading of that issue as well as issue number one, go ahead, stop the video, go to our playlist, and watch them first to get caught up. Ash and Bree are on the run from Jason Voorhees. Jason slaughtered Bree's friends. You know, while they were all having sex in Jason's own house. You see, Pamela Voorhees used the Necronomicon Ex Mortis after Jason drowned all those years ago to bring him back from the dead. She then buried it in the fruit cellar of their house. Ash found the book and in the process rescued Bree from sharing her friend's fate. So far, Ash has only fought deadites. Jason is a whole other bottle of crazy though. Ash thinks that Jason is a deadite manifestation, determined not to let old Chainsaw Hand get away with the book. There's two things Slapshot the Slasher here is going to find out about our hero right now. First, Ash needs a new car. The starter on the Delta is shot, which is one of many problems with this old beast. She's been through a lot with Ash. And second, Ashley J. Williams, the chosen one doesn't die easily. Well, at least not yet, anyway. Another reason Ash needs a new car? Well, Jason caved in the hood and crushed the engine, trying to get to them. But when Ash jumped from the Delta, he accidentally dropped the Necronomicon and became an easy target for Jason. But then, just as Jason lifts Ash by his neck, a car smashes into him. It's Carrie, and she's come to help. How'd you find me, darling? I followed you, knew you'd go after that book, and something told me you needed me. You could have been killed like those kids back there, but you got guts, I'll give you that. Look out! It's about that time they come across Bree, who's wandering around in shock after escaping from the Delta when Jason got his hands on Ash. She's naked, all but a sheet covering her, and mumbling about all dead. All, all dead. Dead. They're all dead. Dead. All dead. All all dead at this point freddy is pissed inside jason's mind prison freddy tortures young jason yelling at him cussing at him and even parodying biff from back to the future hello mcfag you in there hello freddy cuts open jason's forehead in order to peek at his brain but finds something else ash williams a smart clerk well if mr minimum wage has my book I guess we'll just have to go to this S-Mart and place a special order. We then join three guys sitting in an old VW bus smoking a joint outside the S-Mart back room when they hear tires screech outside. It's Ash with Carrie and Bree. The guy in the middle asks, what's going on? Carrie responds by telling him that Jason Voorhees is alive. But then another of the stoners chimes in and begins hitting on Bree. Back off, Cassin numbnuts. Can't you see the girl's in shock? She just saw her friends get butchered. Something tells me she isn't interested in your pencil prick right now. Two of the stoners begin shouting obscenities at Ash, but he puts them in their place by telling them how a deadite in a hockey mask just shredded three high school ass clowns like them with a steak knife. It's here that Carrie steps in and puts everyone in their place and takes Bree inside to get some clothes on her while Ash skims through the book to find a passage or a ritual or something that'll help them. But he can't read it. We need to find a real bookworm type to help translate this crap. I know some of it, but to have a real chance of figuring it out, I need time to really read it or coax an answer out of it. It's about that time the entire store goes quiet and everyone looks on in horror as Jason Voorhees walks through the door and makes his first public appearance to the people of Forest Green. He walks through the bystanders like some kind of zombie Jesus, parting the Red Sea when he comes upon a rather large lady who happened to be in his way. She and her cart in between him 
and the Necronomicon. Jason? Jason? Jason! He shoves one of his hands down her throat and with the other slices an S-Mart employee in half at the waist. He uses a shopping cart to make spaghetti out of an old man and pins a girl to a merchandise rack. Carrie and Bree stand in shock while Ash runs to the back room. Ash, where are you going? You're the chosen one. We can't stop him without you. But then the store manager steps in and tells Carrie to get the shoppers out of here and call the police in a very snark, overcompensating managerial way. You know, kind of like your standard Walmart manager. Jason responds to the paper pusher manager by taking his clipboard and shoving it so hard into his mouth it slices his head clean in half. But just as Jason reaches for the Necronomicon, which Bree has, Ash steps in and uses his boomstick to stop the monster in his tracks. And then shoots the machete clean out of Jason's hand. Yo, Wayne Dedski, hockey fan, huh? They say a slap shot travels over 100 miles an hour, but I find that buckshot goes a hell of a lot faster. This is it, guys. The moment we've been waiting for. Two icons of horror standing toe to toe. Ash moves in with his chainsaw and begins carving away at Jason. But Jason grabs the machine and uses it to throw Ash across the room and into a stack of merchandise. He picks Ash up and crams his head through the drywall, pulls him back out, and then launches him through the wall head first and into a vending machine. As Jason moves in for the kill, Carrie attacks him with a knife to which Jason just bitch slaps her backhanded and then takes the book from Bree. It turns out he didn't just take the book and leave though. Jason ripped Bree's throat completely out in the process. The three stoners from earlier are both sickened by the bloodbath they see, but are also surprised that Ash survived, being thrown face first through a wall and into a vending machine. They decide to go to Carrie's house. Her parents are out of town and they need some place to go to regroup. Jason takes the book back to his ramshack and places it on the table in between the heads of his mom and Freddy, his surrogate father. He then grabs Freddy's head so he can read the book. Klaatu, Verta, Nikto. With that, Freddy is freed and has his dream world powers in the real world. Let's see if we can find some kids who are dying to read too. Freddy plans to leave Jason without fulfilling his end of the deal, but Jason stops him. Freddy decides to live up to his end and uses the book on Jason. Back at Carrie's house, Ash explains to the others that Jason is some kind of deadite vengeance demon. He drowned because of slacking teens at a summer camp and came back to kill anyone that gets in his way. So, why would he want the book? According to legend, this guy doesn't have enough brain power to read Sam I Am, much less the Book of the Dead. The others agree that there has to be some kind of puppet master pulling Jason's strings, so they gotta cut the strings and get the book back. It has some voodoo hoodoo in it that will send Jason to the Deadites dimension and out of our hair for good. The four then decide to get some rest so they can go back to the Voorhees house in the morning and get the book while Ash keeps watch. He tries to stay awake till dawn, but as usual is unsuccessful. Ash wakes up to find his right hand is back. He's whole again, like before the cabin in the woods. But then blades protrude from his fingers and laughter echoes through the house. You bastard, you took my hand again. Freddy has found them. So I really like this issue, guys. It really showcased how tough Ash Williams truly is. However, one thing I think... Um, this series got wrong about Ash is they kind of made him smarter than he is in Army of Darkness and Ash vs. the Evil Dead. Uh, even in Evil Dead 2, he wasn't really all that smart. He was smart in the first Evil Dead movie, but then they kind of rebooted it for whatever reason into Evil Dead 2, and he became more goofy and lovable than, than really smart. Uh, but overall, I will say this was a really good read. I liked how Ash went stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jason. I really liked how Freddy gave uh, Ash his hand back at the end, only to take it away. It's very, very reminiscent of uh, Season 2 of Ash vs. the Evil Dead, which came out long after this series. So maybe Ash vs. the Evil Dead is very reminiscent of this story. Whatever the case may be, still pretty good read. Tune in next time when we take a look at issue number four of this six-part miniseries, Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash, from Wildstorm Comics and Dynamite Entertainment.
If you like this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. I'm Shannon for Come Again TV. Take care.